Hi students, today we are going to study about digestion and absorption. So, you have heard the name of digestion and absorption. Why there is a need of digestion? Why? When we eat any meal or when we have something, so why we need to digest it? It's simple. Because when you eat food such as bread, meat and vegetables, they are not in a form that the body can use as nourishment. Food and drink must be changed into smaller molecules of nutrients before they can be absorbed into the blood and carried to cells throughout the body. So, digestion is the process by which food and drink are broken down into their smallest parts so the body can use them to build and nourish cells and to provide energy. So, food is material substance taken from outside which serve to nourish the body, build up tissues and supply energy. So, nutrients are components of food which cannot be synthesized by body and must be obtained from outside being required for harvesting energy, maintenance of body, building materials for growth and development, tissue repair, etc. So, what is nutrition? So, nutrition is the process by which an organism derives energy to work in other materials required for growth and maintenance of the various activities of life. So, nutrition is a sum of processes involved in taking off all the nutrients required by the body, their internment, distribution and utilization for obtaining energy, repair and growth materials and body protection. So, this is all about nutrition. Now, food intake. So, to aid in the digestion of their food, animals evolve different organs like amoeba develop pseudopodia. Actually, an amoeba obtains its food through its false food called pseudopodia. And what it does? It throws pseudopodia on the surface where prey comes in contact with it. And the pseudopodia engulfs that food forming a food vacuole. This is how amoeba gathers its food. Secondly, paramecium. Paramecium gathers its food through the help of cilia. It use cilia to sweep a food along with some water into the cell mouth. After it falls into the oral group, and at the end of the gullet, a food vacuole forms. Euglena. Euglena is flagella. So it uses flagella for intake of food. Sponges and mollusks. Sponges do not have distinct circulatory, respiratory, digestive and excretory system. Instead, the water flow system supports all these functions, including nourishment. So they filter food particles out of the water flowing through them. Particles from 0.5 mu micron to 50 mu micron are trapped in the ostia. Ostia is the opening which taper from the outer to the inner ends. You can see here the picture of a sponge. Here it's a flagella and the water current flows itself and there is a trapping of food particle. Now tentacles of hydra. Hydra takes its food with the help of these tentacles and you can see here pharynx of earthworm and planarians with the help of pharynx they take their food inside. Leeches and flukes. Here is a picture of leeches. They have oral sucker. These are anterior sucker and posterior sucker. With the help of these sucker, they intake their food. You can see here the picture of parrot. Birds use beaks. So, parrot uses beaks for intake of their food. Parrot grabs the food particle between their beak. Now, human, monkeys and apes, we all use hands. So, so on. So it's clear from these pictures that food intake or that the process of food intake in different organisms is different. So what is a digestion? Digestion is a mechanical and chemical breakdown of food into smaller components that are more easily absorbed into a bloodstream for instance. So digestion is a form of catabolism. But what is catabolism? Catabolism is a breakdown of large food molecules into smaller ones. And digestion occurs with the help of several body fluids, particularly digestive juices that are made up of compounds such as saliva, mucus, enzymes, hydrochloride acid, bicarbonate and bile. So digestion involves mechanical as well as chemical changes in the food taken. Mechanical alteration is brought about by teeth, grinding organs such as gizzard and muscular contraction of stomach and intestinal walls and breaking food into small pieces increases the surface area exposed to the enzymes of digestive juices. Now, digestions are of two types. First one is intracellular. 
What is intercellular? When the process of digestion occurs within the cell in the food vacuum. For example, protozoa, porifera, cylindrata and free living plate helminthes with the help of lysosomal enzymes. You can also see here the picture of intercellular digestion. It's intercellular digestion or you can also say it phagocytosis. It's a form of digestion The materials or food particles are taken into the cell to be digested and lysosomes and food vacuoles are responsible for this. Because phagocytosis is the ingestion of solid particles by endocytosis. The cytoplasmic membrane invaginates. You can see here the picture of phagocytosis or intercellular digestion. The cytoplasmic membrane invaginates and pinches off, placing the particle in the food vacuole. Cytoplasmic membrane pinches off and making food vacuole. These are the food particles. The phagocytic vacuole then fuses with lysosome. This phagocytic vacuole fuses with lysosome and the material is degraded. It. And after absorption, these material is excreted by the exocytosis. Exocytosis is the exit of excretory part. So, intercellular digestion is the cellular process of engulfing solid particles by the cell membrane to form an internal phagosome by phagocytes. Second is extracellular digestion. And what is extracellular digestion? When the process of digestion occurs outside the cell. For example, cylindrates and phylum plate elementis to phylum chordata. Cylindrata and free living plate elements perform both intracellular and extracellular digestion. So, extracellular digestion occurs in the lumen. What is lumen? Lumen is the opening. So, it occurs in the lumen of the digestive system with the nutrient molecules being transferred to the blood or body fluid occurs in chordates, annelids and crustaceans. So, in human being, both of digestion take place. That is of intracellular type and extracellular type. Now, digestive system of human being. It is a system of alimentary canal and digestive glands that take part in ingestion of food, its crushing, digestion, absorption of digested nutrients and ejection of undigested materials. It is divided into two groups, digestive tract or alimentary canal and second is digestive glands. So, the digestive tract performs its mission like a machine. Each organ has a specific job and depends on the others to perform properly. You can see here the picture of alimentary canal. From starting it is mouth, salivary gland, pharynx, esophagus, liver, stomach, pancreas, a small intestine and large intestine. This is anus. You can see here the picture of alimentary canal. Each organ is depend on another organ for the complete digestion of food. First of all, we take alimentary canal. The alimentary canal is a long hollow tube which runs from the mouth to the anus together with several other organs like mouth, vestibule, buccal cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and anus. And on the basis of the origin, Alimentary canal are of three types. These are foregut, midgut, and hindgut. Actually, the gut is an endoderm derived structure. During fetal life, the primitive gut can be divided into these three types of segments. The endodermal lining of the primitive gut gives rise to most of the epithelium and gland. Primordia found in the digestive system. And each segment of the gut gives rise to specific gut and gut related structures in later development. First of all, foregut or stomodium. It is the anterior part of the alimentary canal from the mouth to the duodenum. The epithelium at the most lips and anal pits ends of the gut are of ectodermal origin. So, in foregut, the anterior portion of the mouth develops from an ectodermal depression called stomodium. And at the caudal end, that is at the anal pit side of the embryo, on the ventral aspect of the curving tail region is another ectodermal depression called the proctodium. So, midgut is of endodermal origin and it includes pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. So, in foregut, two parts come buccal cavity and esophagus. In midgut, 
pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestines all come. And in hindgut, it includes only anal canal and anus. Now, parts of alimentary canal. Alimentary canal is divided into following parts. First one is mouth. The taking food into the mouth is called ingestion. We use lips, tongue, and teeth for taking food into the mouth. Because mouth plays an important role in sucking, facial expression, eating, drinking, and breathing. You can see here the picture of mouth. Here are the teeth, and this is a picture of mouth. Now, vestibule. Vestibule is the space between gums and lips in front, and gums and cheeks on the sides. Superior and inferior labial frenula connect the lips with gums. Its lining has mucous glands. From this picture, you will better understand about vestibule. This is vestibule. The space between gums and lips in front, and the space between gums and cheeks on the sides. This is the inferior labial frenulum that connects the lips with the gums. And this is superior labial frenulum that connects lips with the gums. So from this picture, you will better understand about vestibule.